check. I lay bricks, stack foundations, seek liberation for a black brown nation. Speak innovation when I rap, crowds tape it. Nobody ever told me that sounds basic, boy. I don't do songs. I produce poems for youth in the group homes. This is a truth storm. I don't do floss. I do the used stores, sleeping on futons, shopping with coupons, getting my motherfucking two for one juice on. I want a Nissan, but I got a new song. It's tall feather shit. It's cotton picking plantation type of living with a little more etiquette. How the fuck they call them baby killers, veterans, and freedom fighters, terrorists? Redefine the heritage. And I'm a derelict living in an embarrassment. Full of materialism and fake marriages. IDs, PCs, and Mickey D's nourishment. Seeds with fucked up dreams and no encouragement. The third world gets raped and Europe flourishes again. And you say the police are your friends? Ah, what? yo, man, you what? guys, welcome to the Chop Up the chop episode up, number five. Good, good, five. And um, uh, that was Single. progress right there, man. Uh, spark your brain, um, uh, divine. That was your first time hearing it. It's yeah. not the full. Yeah. Uh, it's not the full record. Obviously, we don't. We're not gonna do that. If you guys want to go check it out, uh, YouTube Matthew Progress Spark Your Brain. The visuals are crazy. Visuals yeah. done by Big Sprocks. What, what was your thoughts on that? Yeah, that would. Man, I'm gonna go download that shit myself. It was kind of dope, right? God damn. Yeah, man. Yo, shout out Progress. Progress yeah, man. is that was, uh that was funky. Progress is he's a he's a weirdo, and um, uh, but he's gonna be at a uh, manifesto number eleven, uh, June tenth. He posts on his Facebook that he's gonna be skinny dipping at Echo Beach. Okay. Uh, cop a ticket and come join me, you freak. Um, skinny <laughs> dipping man you had to throw that out so there. yeah progress is gonna be skinny dipping, dipping. you guys can go and uh check him out additionally i want to um uh, highlight another uh dope project that he actually did in case you guys uh missed it or, or were unaware of it um midnight rhetoric um mm -hmm. it was yeah it was a project he put out maybe about a year maybe two years ago all right uh really dope kind of different to, than what you just heard like the progress i'm used to is like mad ignorant and <laughs> niggas know me and my nigga shit <laughs> love my nigga shit right but like i mean if you guys have been following and keeping up with progress you know he's kind of switching it up a bit uh he just recently released um uh the la fog music video uh he did a record i and i and um uh oxygen all these records have been making waves in toronto man nice. complex is supporting it um and you should support it too man so Sweet. make sure you guys check that out yeah, yeah, yeah. Good, good way to start off the show, man. Absolutely, man. Big um, supporter of uh, progress. I just want to say one thing. Um, how do you feel about Nicki Minaj with Nas? Nas <laughs> with Jones? Like, how does um, that make you feel? I think, to be honest with you, I mean, they're both from Queens. That's what I was gonna say. Yeah, yeah. They're yeah. both from Queens, so I like that. And then on top of that, man, like. Think about it. Mm. Think about like Nas and like the public eye in terms of relationships. Right, so right. Carmen, yeah, Jay Z, yeah, Carmen, yeah, more in common. Yeah. Like that wasn't a good look for him. Mm. And then what? Then Khalees. Fuck you too, yeah. bitch. That never turned out good. I think publicly Nas has had some fails when it comes to his relationship publicly. I don't know what's oh. going on in his, uh, his, in his private personal life. behind the scenes. Yeah. So I think I, I think that's a win. I think Nicki's. I think Nikki's pretty. I think she's a bad bitch. No, she is, but I just would have never put those two in the same room. Why? I don't even know. Like it's just you think of Nas coming from the from that from that era that he comes from, and just so particular with the sounds and what he does and mm -hmm. musically. I don't know what Nikki's like as a person outside of that this caricature. Yeah, I I would assume that she's just a around the way chick and she's just cool. Again, like she might be in the kitchen in some booty shorts cooking up some spaghetti. Again, both from Queens, right? So they have the same values. So Nicki Minaj's thing was, <laughs> Ellen asked, "Oh, have you had sleepovers yet?" <laughs> and, and Nikki said, "Yes, we have had sleepovers." <laughs> you know, you know. But the motherfucking monster. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but she said that she wants to be celibate for a year. The fuck so is her that? and Nas haven't, they you haven't, know, they haven't boned. They haven't <laughs> knocking the boots. They haven't, they haven't done the dirty. No f u c k i n g. No, probably just k i s s i n g. Because you know uh, Nas has to be kissing. But I mean, like, okay, honestly, so, you know what? It, it's probably true. I mean, I don't she think didn't, it is. She didn't deny it. You know what? I don't think it is, man. You she know, didn't deny. You it. know what? I don't think it is mm. because 
Nikki, she put out three singles yep. recently. None of them is bubbling. None of them's got that regular Nicki Minaj impact that it traditionally does. So she's got she's I'm, I'm imagining she probably has an album coming out soon. Probably. Nas or, or Nas has an album coming out soon. Yeah. Dude, welcome to 2017, man. This is how you get your bubble on. It's you get, you yeah. get people talking and shit. So I personally don't believe it. I I don't I don't want it to be real. Personally, personally. I don't care either way. Yeah. It doesn't matter to me. So you sent me a clip. Um, and I want you to kind of take the lead on this. It was the one with the uh, progr- uh, Professor, what, McGriff? Oh, Professor Griff from Pro- Public Enemy. Yeah, so, okay, I'm going to I'm gonna run the clip, and then, Devon, I want you to take the lead on this. I want you to break it down, because you the hip-hop historian in the show. <laughs> I, got, I got my little one-twos on this, but you, you break it down for me, man. Go Let's for go. It. it says, with their cash and a superior industry position, these white entrepreneurs installed a new leadership um, over hip-hop, and they began to promote a nefarious niggerization of rap music. It says Karis One and Public Enemy, um, um, with the message that Karis One and Public Enemy, they said we were reaching the masses of young black people. And then NWA niggas with attitudes would be paid off and put in a position where they would neutralize Public Enemy and brothers like KRS One. And then came the gangster rap, thugging, balling, now pimping. Now the metrosexual is about to take over hip hop. And your children, your children, your nephew, Yo, niece, and all the little ones, the shorties now, Tay Tay, Ri Ri, Man Man, and Twan and them in the hood, gonna be wearing fucking skirts. Watch. Man purses and this kind of shit. Seriously. Yeah, the first time yeah. I heard that, yeah. I said, this nigga really had, was on some like crystal ball shit. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so first of all, explain, explain to the listeners who that was. That was okay, everybody, that's Professor Griff. He was one of the most militant members and memorable members of Public Enemy, the super group, with Chuck D and Flavor Flav and the SW1s and DJ Terminator X. Mm-hmm. Okay. Going back to what Professor Griff was trying to get across, especially when NWA was introduced around that time frame when gangster rap was implemented and dropped into suburban America Blue and to the ghettos. Yeah. Jerry Heller, who was the pretty much the founder of NWA. If you ever, if anybody out there has sat down and watched Straight Outta Compton, they know who Jerry. You'll Heller see is. exactly. Yeah, um, he was just pretty much middle-aged white Jewish man <laughs> who had a brain scheme idea when Easy E was approached by him to create this super group called Niggas with Attitude NWA. Mm-hmm. The front man obviously being Easy E and Ice Cube at the time. When if you go back to and listen closely to what Professor Griff is saying, yeah. There was a militant movement going on in hip hop at that time. So if you start at Yo Bum Rush the show and then it takes a nation of millions to hold us back which were two of the most important albums in hip-hop for me, personally. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Eric B. for President. Even if you keep going down the line, we had a lot of uplifting movements. We had Tragedy Gaddafi, who was intelligent hoodlum at that time. Tragedy Gaddafi changed his name, started doing music with Mob Deep, but he still had that Tragedy Gaddafi tie and intelligent hoodlum name. With it, yeah. There was other rappers like Laquan. We had Def Jeff. We had... Everybody was rocking African medallions and, you know, wearing black power shirts and cross color and all of those elements were brought in late 80s to early 90s. And then as soon as N.W.A. come out, this whole flood of gangster rap started to come out. And this was more West Coast. South Coast wasn't really around at that time. So are you so just to kind of to jump in there for a second. Mm -hmm. So is he against what gangster rap brought to hip hop? Absolutely. Okay. Professor ahead. Griff sees that as a demeaning way of showing black people how to live. It's showing them another side of the of life that doesn't need to be broadcasted because it's basically taking away from the purity of the music and what it stood for. Yeah. When Public Enemy came out, when KRS-One and Boogie Down Productions came out, when that Stop the Violence song came out with Dougie Fresh and all of them and Big Daddy Kane, MC Light, Self-Destruction. I don't know if you know what that song is. No. 
one of the most important songs ever made in hip hop, in my opinion. Yeah. If you put that song on today, it's relevant to 2017. Oh, yeah. Because everything up, that's man. happening in that song is exactly what's happening now. Yeah. And the hook is self destruction. We headed for self destruction. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Stetson Sonic's yeah, on there. Song. Like, yeah, yeah. that song was uplifting black people in the in the inner city ghettos and in the hoods even in the suburbs to stay away from the gun violence and stop killing each other but when you have groups like nwa and don't get me wrong i was a big fan of nwa so you're not I, a fan of nwa anymore or? i still am but okay. what i'm saying is, is a lot of people that listen to nwa or they listen to too short or they listen to others forms of so-called gangster rap Mi might misinterpret what their message is. Like Ice T when he came out and he said, "I'm your pusher." Mm -hmm. Ice T was talking from his street like street life perspective. Yeah, but he was telling you at the same time to don't do the shit that I'm doing. If a motherfucker's carrying a gun down the street and he's rapping about it, that doesn't necessarily mean that he's preaching to you to do it to do the same thing. But a lot of the people who were listening to N.W.A. Easy E. And they were listening to all that other shit that was coming out around that time. They were misinterpreting what the message in the music was. You know, I don't want to say bashing, but, you know, saying that the gangster rap wasn't good. I mean, I don't find that to be accurate. Okay, no, that's not accurate. <clears throat> but everything else that Professor Griff was saying in that interview, even when he got to the end, yeah. that interview was old. Yeah. Do you yeah. know how old that interview is? Mad old. And he predicted what the fuck is going on right now. With the with purses, the purses and, the and the dresses. Why do you think he had the foresight to see that? Like, why? That shit was probably already in motion. But you why? Have to understand but what is the benefit of that? Is of to, getting niggas to wear dresses to and demasculinize a race of people. Why is a guy rocking a purse? Why is he wearing skinnier jeans than his girl? You know what I'm saying? If I he's don't know. wearing if he's wearing capris that are skinny, almost like painted on yeah. with a blouse. Yeah. With a handbag made from Louis Vuitton or whoever. Fucking little Uzi Vert. With the little the nose fuck's going piercing on, man. in the middle and the purple hair. There's something wrong with that. But and, do if, you and if you're okay, not you meaning you, yeah. but if you're okay being a man wearing a purse and wearing girl clothes, that is what the agenda is shifting to. And that's exactly what Professor Griff was saying. He was probably seeing all that shit already written down in offices because you got to think how long he was in the industry for. So with that, I want to go into a new segment. All right. Um, uh, so this is something we're trying out. Listeners, you know how we do. Uh, last time we introduced the classic. The classic seems to be going well. Yeah. And um, uh, we're going to try a new segment called the Weekly Ratchet Report. <laughs> um, uh, basically, the Weekly Ratchet Report is just, well, I think it's a little self-explanatory. Absolutely. Just ratchet shit that's going on. I'm going to, it's basically a segment that I brought up. Uh, we're trying out. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, well, we're going to see how that goes. Woo. And, you know, we definitely want your feedback. Make sure you guys uh, leave it in the comments. Comments. Let us Comments. know if you're feeling it or not, <laughs> and um, uh, if it's something you want us to continue, uh, we're, 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 we're definitely going to do that, all right? Awesome. <laughs> Let's get into this. I'm so excited. <laughs> Back in high school, I used to be like, oh, hell no, tell my motherfucking ears. Nowadays, I'd be like, oh, hell no, hold my motherfucking ears. The Weekly Ratchet Report, brought to you by The Ignorance Is. Fool, fool, fool. Don't get me fucked up, bitch. I'm still hood as shit and we'll fuck your ass up. Okay, okay, all right. So the weekly ratchet report, segment oh, number one. Yeah, so basically, there was a black man uh, who lost his penis in a botched circumcision. You need to shut. <laughs> so he the lost. Fuck so he was trying to get circumcised. He lost his dick, and um, surprisingly enough, there was a donor, but the donor was white. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> so this dude, Whoopsie. so this dude is actually going to get his uh, new dick tatted up in black ink, just so it matches the color of his skin. Wow, what kind of tattoo shop? Is this? <laughs> not in Toronto. <laughs> now, um, uh, additionally, so there's a porn star you guys may or may not be familiar with, Aurora Snow. Um, uh, so she was interviewed, right? Okay, and okay. Um, uh, they asked her to like, um, so hey, like, how does your dad feel about you sucking dick for a living? And apparently. Her dad actually, you know, said that she's 
He's proud. I'm gonna He's keep proud him. that uh, she is a porn star. So, um, uh, <laughs> what are your thoughts on that? If, you, if you're, I don't want to put this on your daughter, but I mean, like, <laughs> don't ever say "put on my daughter" in a sentence. I'm gonna have to call security up in this bitch. Right but I mean, okay, quick. but for real though, the like, fuck is that? Like for real, like, if, like, what are your thoughts on that? Would you be okay with that? Absolutely not, man. Why not? That's just. Have you ever watched porn in your life, Divine? That's like asking a cow if it has milk. So you're going to be a hypocrite then? That's not the point. You're <laughs> losing the point. My child is yeah. my child. And she can't do the porn on graphic films. No, not see? at all. No. All right, fine. No, <laughs> that's, that's just where I leave it, bro. <laughs> and yo, yo, look at baby. If you ever listen to this, if you ever... <laughs> <laughs> Go on screen. It better be with fucking Julia Roberts. Oh my god! Thank you. So there's this. So there's this girl. Her name's Kim, and uh, she's she won't give her entire name, mm. but she's Australian and half German. Oh, mm. oh right. Yeah. Oh, not bad at all. So you see, we're all right. See, I'm glad that you responded the way you so did you going with this? because she's 18. Oh, <laughs> she's a virgin. Oh, <laughs> and um, she's uh. Let me give you. Let me give you the measurement. So she's she's five feet. Eight mm-hmm. inches. Okay. And um, uh, I don't know why it doesn't say the weight. I feel like that would be important. But she's actually auctioning off her virginity. Wow. The bidding cool. The bidding is starting at 100,000 euros. Now, wow. now, this is being auctioned. You know somebody in Dubai is grabbing that oh, shit. Oh, for sure. <laughs> so, so, so this is being auctioned off at a site called Cinderella Escorts. And um, uh, apparently her virginity is going to be proven with a doctor's certificate. And she actually got this idea from another chick who did it, um, Alexandra Keffin. She was 18. She's a, she was a Romanian model, or I guess still is. Okay. Divine. She sold her virginity for mm-hmm. 2.3 million euro to some oh. unknown Hong Kong businessman. Wow. What are your thoughts on that? Now, First, now, 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 and, and I'm sorry, I don't mean to cut you off like that. But wow. But think about it. Yeah. She's going to fuck at some point. At some point she's going to fuck. She's probably going to fuck a nigga named Rodney who works at Burger King. <laughs> in, Get in his, pregnant and end up in a one bedroom apartment you with what no I'm air conditioning. So 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 Kim, she wants to do this because she wants to pay for her studies. But uh, two point three million dollars. No, 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 no. That was the one she inspired. Oh, this is the other one. That one that inspired yeah, it. But yeah, yeah, the new yeah. chick. She I love the way you said <laughs> it. <laughs> like she inspired her to write a book or, or something on like Whole Foods. Nah, she inspired, she inspired shit. You should really, really, like, <laughs> you know, auction off your virginity. Auction like, off what that the pussy. Fuck is but, that? But, but think about it though. Like mm-hmm. it's not like she wants to take the money and get ratchet. Weekly ratchet report. No, she oh. wants to pay for her study. She wants to buy a flat. A car, and she wants to do shit with the money. Now, at the end of the day, she's gonna get fucked at some point. Mm-hmm. So, what are your real thoughts on that? Like, is the is the money thing real though? Like, yes, they really it's a real thing. Yes, it is real. I think it's absolutely ridiculous, man. What happened to student loans? Like, just go get they a fucking fuck a student loan, nigga. Like, I know people still paying that shit off. Okay, yeah, and. Just do nah, it. Nah, nah. Come nah. on, really? You know what? Like, I've, you heard know what? Of, I've, I'm, heard of, I'm, I've heard of having a hustle, but that's fucked up, man. Dude, prostitution. That's like, is the prostitution is the oldest fucking hustle ever. That's more than prostitution. That's you're selling, you're selling your body, your soul, and your mind. That's your mm. first time ever having sex. Yeah, and you're gonna. You're going to let a man that you've never, ever, ever met from another country come and Anyone. blaze it. Anyone, That's as long as they got out. the price tag for right. two point three million dollars. Two point three, no, that two point three million euros. euros. Euro. Do the math, people, into American. So what? What are you like? So so no, you're totally against that. I'm totally against it. If I'm, being, I understand getting on your grind and doing your hustle, but what the fuck is going on? If, man? if I'm being honest, no. I'm okay with that. You're okay with it? I'm okay with that. You're okay with that? I'm not okay with my daughter doing it. <laughs> okay, but... <laughs> but I'm no, okay with that. not at all. <laughs> I'm okay with that. But at the same time, like, what if what if somebody you knew personally, like, said, you know what, Chris, I'm in a really bad situation. Yeah. I don't know what the fuck to do, but I'm a virgin. I'm going to sell my punani. Like, come on, really? I'm like, sell that pussy, girl. So move it on, man. Yo, Devon, you sent me another clip I thought was kind of interesting. Uh, Papoose. Papoose is an interesting person. He really is. He's, he's constantly on his own dick. Like, I don't yeah. I don't think that him and and um, uh, Remy will mm. ever have a kid mm. because... 
He's feeling his own dick. He's on his own dick too much. He needs to get off his own dick in order for them to have sex. Uh, Check out what Pat Poose said, (laughs) man. man. I seen a lot of people who said, yo, technically, Pat Poose is better than Jay-Z. Lyrically, Pat Poose is. You know what I mean? If you put all the extra shit aside, which has nothing to do with, you know, our craft. I mean, facts is facts. Lyrically, he's not on my level. I mean, you got to take your hat off to the dude on a business level, but we just talking about what we do, this craft. A lot of people try to take you away from this and um, put other things in the way there to insinuate that being a gangster or being or having money makes you a great artist. That doesn't make you a lyricist. That makes you what it is, you know what I mean? So, you know, lyrically, he can't fuck with me. You know, he does have a valid point in a way. Papoose, if you've ever listened to Papoose, like back when he was fucking with Busta and all that. Yeah. Papoose is nice. He's got some bars, Papoose, man. Papoose is nice. Like, Jay, Jay was nice. Mm. But when you, like, think of putting those two in a ring together. Come on. Come on, man. Jay-Z is not a free... First of all, Jay-Z can't freestyle to save his life. Nah. You know what I'm saying? Jay-Z... To me, is just you know, with all the lights and all the right clothes and all the right people around him, mm-hmm. Jay Z is the top nigga in there. Oh, but absolutely! With the because he has the marketing behind him, he has the money behind him. But if you were to do the same thing with Papoose, he would be skyrocketing. But I don't think that Papoose can make a record like Jay Z. I think what Papoose was well, saying yeah. is technically, technically, mm-hmm. you know what I mean, like. He, bar for bar, mm-hmm. he can't fuck. Uh, Jay Z can't fuck with him. No, but like in terms of making a song, I think Jay Z's got that over Pat. Well, absolutely, because you gotta understand Jay Z's master his craft over the years, mm-hmm. and Jay Z has albums. Papoose doesn't have albums. That's one album, the Nasarima Dream, which sounds dated as fuck. Which, oh. which even goes to the point again, mm-hmm. like about Jay Z being able to create like an actual. Well, hey, songs like mm-hmm. good songs, yeah, and yeah. a body of work, yeah. But Papoose, what he does is he hops in and he'll do a little one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, yeah. And he'd be like, Oh, Papoose, Papoose oh my he, god, yeah, he's a feature rapper, yeah. He, you know, it's like he sounds good on other people's songs, yeah. But would you really go and buy a Papoose album? Fuck no, but that's and that's why I don't really think that he maybe he's technically, yes, better than Jay in. Certain areas, I think lyrically, he's lyrically better than he's Jay. better than Jay, but he doesn't have a body of work to support that. All yeah. he has is these features and these freestyles and the things that. But he's no, done. but but yeah, but you can you could listen to all that. Mm-hmm. I think, and I, I, I don't. We're not going against each other. I don't, it doesn't sound like the, like it on this. I think we're on the same page. Yeah, but like even with the limited body of work, and when I say limited, I'm only comparing that to Jay's body of work. Mm-hmm. I think like if you even have half a fucking brain you understand what i'm saying and like you you, like he was saying you put the the shit aside put you know the accolades aside put Mm -hmm. the business moves aside Mm -hmm. beyonce aside put all that shit aside (laughs) (laughs) papoose is lyrically better than jay-z absolutely you know what i mean but his music career sucks he's horrible horrible shit i like that i like that and and i want to continue on that but with that i actually want to play a clip I don't gonna lie, niggas gotta really step it up, man. The bar is way down. It is. The it's bar the bar's on the floor. is no bar. The bar's like, on the, the bar ground. for being nice right now is way down. Like, I ain't gonna lie, I hear the radio some days, and I just gotta light up, because I don't know who the fuck these people are sometimes. Right. Like, right. I gotta smoke a blunt and go, what the fuck was that? You know what it is with me? Niggas suck. I'm going to keep it 100 with you. That's the like, I'm a lyricist. Like, I'm a, if you ain't saying nothing nice like to me, what the fuck is you playing it for? Like, yeah. The nigga just said some garbage. The beat was crazy. The hook was you know, right. That goes off, but the nigga just said some shit my son could have said. That goes off the demographics, yeah, though. We yeah, came from the era of yeah, lyrics. You know what I'm saying? Now, the if next you don't generation. dance with your joint, it don't even matter what you said. Don't you be? Yeah, it's, it's, All right. it's the demographics. Remember, remember when you was coming up? Then the old nigga on the block was always yapping about something. And he'd be like, oh, go ahead, old head. Don't you feel like sometimes we talking that old, old head talk? And listen to what Styles P is just saying. I'm from the era of lyrics and so on and so forth. He's talking about the same era that you're talking about, that yep. we're talking about. Absolutely. But you don't get that now anymore. Why? You hear New York rappers talk about it all the time. I'm in New York. Mm-hmm. I turn on the radio. For all I know, I could be in Atlanta. 
I could Very be in the, because the the New York rappers now they don't make music like that. They said fuck that shit, and now they're making all the Atlanta shit, the shit that sounds like from, they're from the West. Listen to the production; it doesn't even sound like New it's York. It's all the same. So this is what I'm saying. So yeah. even the New York niggas, they conformed. Even they can. Conf- they're like, oh shit, yeah, our music has substance and it's dope. You can listen to it if you're having a bad day, but. I'm fucking broke as shit. And the West Coast nigga talking about bitches and drinking a 40 and I killed 80 niggas. Yeah. They're rich. Yeah. So even they conformed. So Not all of them. Not all of them. Yeah, but the majority of them has. Well, maybe. Not the ones I listen to cuz I don't fuck with that shit. Mm-hmm. I mean, if you're going to if you're going to hurt the integrity of your music and you're going to switch just because of fucking record sales, then you're not worthy of me buying your album. But I mean, like, gonna, but, not, but is it about switching because of record sales or is it about switching because you want to keep up, you want to stay relevant? You want to stay relevant and you want to keep up, but you also want people to want your music. Mm-hmm. So it it goes hand in hand. It's either, why would you switch your sound for yourself? You don't buy your own music. You're going to switch your sound because other people, you want them to want your music. We talked about this last week, and we talked about uh, when we were talking about Bomb. Mm -hmm. We were talking about growing, and I said that I want to hear Table of Nonsense Bomb. I want to hear fucking the intro Bomb. I want to, his whole new album, Mm -hmm. I want it to be that. Right, right, right. That was over a decade ago, and, and you were like... Artists grow as they should. Artists grow, but as they, they have should. to grow to the point where they have to change and. But that's trying something. Their but that's trying so, That's trying something new. Is though. it trying something new, or is it trying something new because they have no other choice? It could be both. You wouldn't know. You know what I mean? You wouldn't know because all you could do is take the artist's word for it. I remember Noriega. Um, uh, he, he 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 came up with a he came up with a new album. Fuck, I can't remember what it's called. But uh, he did an interview on the Breakfast Club, and he was talking about it, mm-hmm. and. Um, He's like, yeah, you know what? Like, I kept it new. I kept it old. I got Pete Rock on there. And, you know, and he's talking about the, uh, I got the Neptunes on there. And I got uh, DJ Mustard on there. So he was trying to mix it up. But, like, and and student of the game. That's okay, what yeah, the album yeah. was called, okay. student of the game. So okay. he was trying to say, look, I'm a student of the game. I know where I came from. I know my roots. And you're going to get that. Mm-hmm. But I'm going to show these young boys I can run with them, too. Now, when I hear that. You could say, okay, this is Noriega saying it. I believe him. He's just showing growth. Yeah. Or you can hear that and you could be like, nah, nigga, you're just trying to sell some fucking yeah. records. <laughs> exactly. You know exactly. what I'm saying? It's so, like, yeah, no, it could go either way with him. Do you, do you think like you'll ever like it'll ever come full circle? That that sounds gonna come right back around. Yeah. I think eventually it will. And I think a lot of the artists and a lot of the producers like Apollo Brown. Uh, Black Milk, Ninth Wonder, they're still out there. The premi- the premiere, the primo, those producers are still out there. The large professors. Mm-hmm. If you go on Mass Appeal and you look at all those guys that are digging in the crates, man, those guys who are making beats from samples and shit. Yeah. Those, those even like there's fucking ASAP P, who's a member of ASAP Rocky's camp. Yeah. Even he's doing some kind of head nod and boom bap shit. I believe they want to fucking still do it. But the, it's the record labels who wanted to put out that bullshit because it sells, man. I believe there's a space for it. For what? For that, like, boom bap traditional hip hop. There's not a space for it. That's what the fuck it is. I believe there is a space there, for no, it. No, there's no space. I believe there is a space. <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> and because, like, again. Come on. No, 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 no. Hold on a second. Yeah. It's not about a space because boom bap is the essence of hip hop. That's where it came from. Break beats, drums, samples. There's no... That, if you want to say there's a space for something, there's a space for Vanilla Ice and MC Hammer. Yeah. They existed at a point. They were in a little touch of the culture. Mm-hmm. But the space was for them. So what you, The whole pie was for boom bap and hip hop. I love it how they just belonged in there for a moment. A but, but, but listen to listen to how listen to the words that you're choosing. Mm. Everything is past tense, dog. Now too though. No, not now, man. Because right now is just a test. 
Because we went through that test. We have a catalog of music that sucked back in the 80s and 90s. Yeah. But they were just a piece of the pie at the time to distract people from what the fuck was real. There's a time and a place for everything. And this too shall will pass. It better. I don't think so, man. It will. And you want to know? Because people can only handle so much of the bullshit. You know, there's why, certain why? genres of music that that dead now, right? What like all those uh, like those little pop groups that used no to I'm ta- no I'm talking about I'm, no no I'm talking about a genre of music what disco dead. fucking rock's dead too rock is not dead traditional rock music is dead it's dog. not actually if you talk to anybody all those rockers out there that grow out their hair and wear all black in those chains and sh- shop at those fucked up stores yeah those guys know when their groups are playing see no you're talking cult. Following, I'm not talking. I'm talking about rock mainstream. mainstream. I'm talking. Rock? About, yeah, no, 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 no. I don't mean mainstream rock. I'm talking about when you put it on much. I'm talking about if well, MTV don't play videos, but I'm talking about like, like much loud and all. That yeah, shit. I'm t- that shit don't exist anymore. When you watch your um, uh, when you watch your 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 outlet, wherever you watch music, mm-hmm. I'm talking. I'm just talking about TV. Yeah, I remember watching that shit. And hoping and praying to God to even catch a hip hop or R and B video, it was all rock. That shit is gone. It's gone. It's gone. And the reason why I'm saying that is, and the reason why I'm bringing that up is because yeah. even the even the artists in that genre, they conform to what you call what you see today, which is like like alternative rock. You understand what I'm saying? It's not yeah. traditional rock. It's not. It's like alternative not, rock. Yeah, yeah. And they can so same thing like with hip hop. You're talking about traditional hip hop. Some could say the shit that's going on today is like alternative hip hop. We, we talked about it. Hip hop. Hip yeah. hop. You understand or what pop I'm saying? Rap, pop, pop rap. Pop yeah, rap. Pop rap. So, yeah, this, yeah. so this is what I'm saying. It's like, but because of those motherfuckers that didn't, you know, hold the, 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 the culture dear and the, and the music dear. Mm-hmm. I'm talking about rock. Mm-hmm. In my opinion, that shit died the fuck out. And, and you have it what did. you have it now. Yeah. So if that can happen in rock, why can't it happen in hip hop? It can. Rock and rock is, was around longer than hip hop, for sure it was. And white motherfuckers buy shit, niggas download shit for free, yeah. and they <laughs> they were buying shit, and it, they'd still gone. Mm-hmm. All What's I'm it? saying is it could happen over here, it, it, and it could happen to hip hop, but we have to have faith that it won't. We have to believe as hip hop lovers that the shit's gonna keep moving. And this will pass. Because how long? Okay. Yeah. How long do you really, really think? Like Little Yachty, Uzi Vert, 21 Savage, and all those guys. Careers are gonna I happen. don't think they're going to be around Look long. at Waka Flocka. I don't Remember think when Waka gonna, Flocka, yeah, Flocka but, Flame was huge? And I'll tell you, I was watching a video, and it broke down all these fucking artists that we thought were going to be on top now. Mm-hmm. Remember when BET was popping and 106 and Park yeah. was popping? Yeah. And they used to play like Laffy Taffy. And um, chicken noodle (laughs) soup. Yeah, (laughs) chicken noodle soup. I was watching it today with my wife. We were watching it. And she, I I was talking to her. I'm like, do you remember when we thought that this shit was going to be taking over? Mm -hmm. Like, what was the other guy's name? Um, uh, I'm in the crib. Young Jack. Like, what happened to him? So what I'm saying is, is that past... I was fucking worried that that sound was going to be taking over hip hop and rap. Oh, I get you. But where are those artists now? No, 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 no. All those little groups, those Laffy Taffy and fucking guys, that South sound. Remember when the South was banging with all those people? Like the fucking. Jibs. Remember Jibs? I remember Jibs. Chain Hang Low. Yeah. Mims. No, but. This is why I'm hot. All that sound is now fucking gone. No, no, no. The rappers are gone. Yeah. And they're gone for good reason. But that sound is gone. The sound is gone. Remember, yeah, like yeah. you got to think the that sound, that the whole yeah, like that, 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 that blink, blink, yeah, blink, all, blink, the snap blink, music, blink, snap music, all that shit, yeah, that's is gone. gone. Now, but but they, but, yeah, but, yeah, but, but, yeah, they, but they created this mumble rap. Yeah, shit. but the, yeah, they created some new shit. Right, but that's gonna pass because that shit that they were trying to make us look dumb. I get, I get, I get what you're saying. Big I do get what you're saying. Stupid. I do get what you're saying. They're like, okay, fuck, that didn't work. Okay, they're not wearing triple extra large shirts anymore. So how the fuck are we going to do this now? Okay, bring John John in. Okay, now he's going to wear skinny jeans, a purse, and he's going to wear a blouse. Fuck, that's not working. Now what? 
So it's going to shift. This mumble rap era and all these guys that went on double XL are not going to last. I give it another maybe two, three no, years. But, but you know what? No, no, I, I totally get what you're saying. Through all of that, what has stood the test of time has always been there. Was that traditional hip hop shit? And that will never go away because people right, still right, fiend right. for it. But what's weird though is, is it's why the heroine the, of the culture. Then why did the rock shit fade like that? Uh, I, I guess, don't get it. I don't know. Metallica's still doing their thing. There's a lot of groups out there that are still doing their thing. ACDC still doing their thing. New shit. Yeah, yeah. But I think Metallica just released a new album, but not to the scale. As far as like being put out there and like you said, you got to be in the know to know. Right. Like I don't really follow the heavy metal rock scene. Mm -hmm. I know the groups. I know their music, but I'm not. Heavy and you know, they're still active. They're still active. Metallica, even Lady Gaga fucking performed with Metallica. on a, a Yeah, yeah, show. yeah. I've seen that. So show. what I'm saying is, is there's still core groups in the rock industry, mm -hmm. but they're being overshadowed by these little. You like know, like boy bands, like and fuck shit like Maroon that. Five is not rock, but they're, no. ca but they're categorized as pop rock, right? Yes. So what they categorize as rock music today is not typically what we would look at rock music as back, like maybe 10, 15 years ago. You know what I mean? Do Do you think that the people who were into that traditional rock music look at like a Maroon Five and feel the same way we we do when we Probably. look at Lil Yachty? I would think so. <laughs> they're like. <laughs> Coldplay, Coldplay, and Maroon Five ain't fucking rock. <laughs> Give me a fucking beer, John. Yo, you know what you, I mean. Did, did, <laughs> like, did you watch um uh, the Billboard Awards? I watched a little bit of it. How Fuck. did Drake Sky fucking beat out Adele? I don't care because I still don't like his fucking music. Okay, <laughs> so it, I don't care how many awards he won. He could have taken every single award from that show and peed in them. And poured it on somebody, and I still wouldn't give two shits if Drake won every single award. And I'm not saying that because I'm a hater. Okay. I just don't fucking care. You don't I like don't his like music. Drake's music. And I'm going to be the one on the fucking air to say it. I don't have to like Drake's music. Of course not. Oh, my God. How can you not like Drake or The Weeknd because they're from Toronto? Do you want to know why? Because I like Justin Bieber's albums better than either of those. The Purpose album was one of the best albums of that fucking year. What, what, what are your thoughts on this, this Drake and Tory Lanez getting back together? Because to me, I'm like, everybody's making such a big deal out of it now. With all due respect, if there was like violence, a, potent, a possibility of violence, mm -hmm. okay, cool. Mm -hmm. I'm all for the peace. But if there was no violence, then what do you mean getting the fuck cares? What, are they in a relationship? Do they I share give a fucking a bed? Fuck that Drake and Tory Lane squashed the beef? What? Why is this shaking shit? I don't give a fuck. Because Tory Lane, I remember, I think it was on The Breakfast Club or it was on Sway in the Morning. Yeah. There was this whole big fucking controversy with the fact that Tory Lane's. Took Drake's sound. Yo, do you know how many rappers in Toronto sound like Drake right now? There you go. I was on Hip Hop Canada today mm -hmm. listening to the song of the day. Uh, Drake has a new one out right now. Something all night. I can't remember the name of it right now. Good song. Okay. To be clear. Mm -hmm. Good song. Mm -hmm. But I can't help when I listen to it. It sounds like Drake. Okay. The production is... Similar, Similar to, to, to the Drake, Drake sound, sound, the yeah. flow, like the, the, the singing on it. Like, and I get it. Like it's 2017, pretty much every rapper sounds like that. And I get that. But I mean, if Drake shows up, if your song is, in, is playing in a club, and I'm not talking about Drake right now. Mm -hmm. I'm just talking about you who made a song, whoever you are out there made a song. And nigga, you know, in your fucking heart that it sounds like a Drake record. Yeah. And, and, and you're in a club. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and the song is blaring and niggas is feeling it. And Drake shows up and he taps you on the shoulder and he's like, yo, that's a good song. You sound like me, though. Not being like an asshole, but just like, yo, you, you kind of sound like me. What do you say to that? <laughs> like, what do you say? Can you be like, no, I don't. C but can you, you know deep down. You know you say, and you I know you do. Yeah, and I get yeah. it. You know, like we get influenced by the shit we listen There's to. There's a difference between being influenced and just copycatting somebody. Putting it through a photocopier and making a copy. Yeah, man, like... You know, shit, that's like, completely fucked up. Like, a lot of this shit to me, and not just in Toronto, but just in general. A lot of the hip-hop, like the commercialized hip-hop, it does sound like Drake. But I, I don't want to leave the Billboard thing because when I, I seen it... I I know you don't care, but I care. 
This is what I care about. What do you care about? Okay, when I heard he won the 13 awards, I'm like, okay, what were they for? I'm Googling. Top, art, top artist. I'm Googling. I'm YouTube. I can't find a fucking list. Yeah. So for, for the people who do care, such as myself, yeah. I'm going to give you the list. Because I don't care. Uh, fuck you, Divine. I'm going <laughs> to give you the list. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> so, 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 you know what? That's going to be my new segment. <laughs> I don't care <laughs> about fucking award shows. <laughs> so yo, Drake won. <laughs> Drake won for top artist. I don't care. He won for top male artist. <laughs> Fuck you. Let me get through the list. <laughs> ahead, he he won ahead. for top male artist. Fuck off. Uh, top <laughs> Billboard 200 artist. What? Top 100 100 artist. Top Hot 100 artist. Oh, fuck. Uh, top song sales artist. Top streaming songs artist, top rap artist, top rap tour, top, top taking it in the ass <laughs> artist. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Top <laughs> Billboard 200 album, which I disagree with. I thought Views sucked. Uh, top rap album. Again, I thought that album sucked. And it was uh, for the Views album. Yeah, yeah. Oh. So, okay, you know what? Actually, I'll go back. Top Billboard 200 album. It did sell like a motherfucker fine. But top rap album, disagree with. Moving moving right along. Uh, top streaming song, One Dance, just the audio. Uh, the Panda visual actually beat them. And uh, top R&B song, One Dance. Top R&B collaboration, One Dance. So, the nigga won 13 awards. Like, fucking divine, whether you hate him or not, that's a fucking good look. You understand what I'm saying? What, okay, but what? Just because you win. Uh, anyway. And, 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 I, and I get. I, I know don't where you're care. Going, I know where you're going. The, Just because he wins awards doesn't make the music good. I know, and you're right, because the Billboard Awards, remember, Billboard, that's charting. It's, yeah. it's That award, whole award show is about. Your numbers exactly. So that award show doesn't represent it's not, quality it, it of music. It doesn't hold the validation of your music. It represents the work, the work, the the, the your moving units. It shows that you're a popular artist. It has some sort of you know solidification. It is an award after all. I hear what you're saying, nigga. If if I gave you a fucking ribbon mm -hmm. for the person who can drink the fastest cup of water, yeah. To whoever's listening, that don't mean like shit, but it still is, you know, it's significant. You like I said, I don't ah. fucking care. And I'm going to say because just because Drake is from Toronto doesn't mean I have to like his music mm -hmm. or him. And I, it's not that I don't even like him. I think he's a funny guy. I see him in interviews. I see him in shit. He's cool. But I just, I don't know, man. I, I'm just waiting for that album to come out. That makes me do you like him when Do you like him when he raps? I, no, I don't. The only album that I actually paid attention to was the first real full-length album he put out. So that was his first one. Thank, uh, thank me later. Thank me later. I actually didn't mind that album. There was some stuff on there I liked. Yeah. But after that, I, I don't know. I, it, Drake isn't one of those hip-hop artists or rap artists that make me want to go to the store and get eager to buy his album. Mm-hmm. There's only a certain amount of people that make me feel that way. And no, I, I don't get, feel like that at all. You know, like when the Joey Badass album came out. Yeah. I was excited to order that album and get a physical copy off of Amazon. Yeah, but Divine, you also have to remember, I think Drake's audience is very female. Yeah, he's a pop star. And he like if you if you like anyone who gets excited for a Drake album to be released. Mm -hmm. You have a vagina. <laughs> you Very have a true. vagina. Very true. Okay. Very true. I'm not saying that you have a vagina if you like his music. I like his music. I I have a dick, but I don't get excited when Drake's new shit's coming out. Mm -hmm. Nigga, you know what? Like uh, more life. Haven't heard it. Views. I, I I struggled through it because like he just. I like it. I do like it when he sings, but he sings too fucking much. How many songs and, on Views were actually singing? And there was twenty, like half. So how many songs were on the There's album? There's twenty, and, and I, th I, th and I think 10 it's songs? And I, yeah, and I think it's too much music, man. Like, like I think you need to filter it down and just put out. And to me, this is to me, it's not a solid body of work. I think if you're Drake, you're a mega star, and you can rap well, and you can sing. But that's not who's buying the albums anymore. Exactly. So they he purposely just says, put that it, out man. because girls are gonna buy that shit and sing along with it. Uh, even more life. I thought. I, again, I haven't heard it, and I don't have any interest in listening to it. I, I like the fact that he's doing his thing. Absolutely. But the other thing, too, what's weird to me, mm. and, and then I'll get off Drake. Do you remember Young Tony? Young Tony? No. This is fucked up, okay? Young Tony is a rapper from Toronto. Okay. Who is fucking incredible. 
way better rapper than Drake. Mm. Way better, bar none. Yeah. And he just stopped rapping. Young Tony, who's constantly in Drake's entourage, if you watch this Billboard's award you, and any other appearance, Drake, you will see Young Tony. He's always there. But yeah. he doesn't go by Young Tony. He goes by Hush. Okay. He goes by Hush. Because he and doesn't rap anymore. I know. But, and, and I'm thinking to myself, She's I'm like. To Hush because I can't fucking rap. Anymore. I know. But I'm thinking to myself, why don't you rap anymore? And like. There's no interviews out there. Nothing about why he doesn't rap anymore. No. So he just disappeared. Now, here's the thing. No more rapping. As far as rapping. But here's the thing. If you go with the, the narrative of Drake having a ghostwriter. That could be. And if you know of Young Tony. Hush. Hmm. Let me tell you something. For you motherfuckers listening to this. YouTube Young Tony right now. I am fucking divine. I'm tasking you with this. Next week, we're going to talk about it. Mm -hmm. I am telling you, you'll be like, holy shit. The nigga could rap. He's on a hundred strong arm niggas and he has a whole bunch. He is incredible at rapping. And then with the fucking rumors about the ghostwriting, whether you believe it or not, I don't give a shit. I still think Drake makes amazing, amazing music. But whether you believe it or not, it's like you had this dude. He's with you every single day. Yeah. He, he, he is extremely talented. <laughs> yet, and so he doesn't rap anymore. And just, you got circle. You got, you got voices or little whispers saying that you, you have a ghostwriter. Huh. I don't know, man. Interesting. Kind of fishy to me. I'm going to leave it out there for you guys to uh, put it in the comments. Man. As, I soon, as, I leave, that, as soon as I leave this building tonight, I'm going to go yeah, please, to this Young Tony. Yeah, please, please YouTube Young Tony. Dope artist. Dope, dope, dope artist uh, who doesn't rap anymore. But That's again, I'm going I'm to leave it to you, the viewers, man. Let me know what you guys think about that in the comments. You can at me on Twitter at I'm Chris Green. Give me some information, man. Like, again, I, I love the fact that he's clearly doing his thing. He's, mm. he's, he's moving in an amazing circle. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. I ain't going to lie. I would shut the fuck up and write, write a nigga's raps. Change your name to Hush. I would, I, I would do it. Fuck it. I don't give a shit. Make some bread. Uh, nigga, I'm good. Yeah. I'm fucking good. Mm. You don't need to know. I know. If I'm the fucking the oil and the, and the shit behind the machine, that's cool. You don't need to know about it. I know. I would be cool with it, but... Let me know what you guys think, man. But moving on uh, past that, as <laughs> always, let's get into it. And now for my next number, I'd like to return to the to the to the classic. 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 I'm better than I ever been. What up? No. Welcome to the classics. This week is me. Classic report. Is it the classic report? Is that what we named it? That's what we named it. Nigga, I don't remember naming it. The Shut classic. up. All That's right. what we named it. <laughs> <laughs> Shit changes randomly. Classic so make sure, report. Yeah. <laughs> so you, you definitely got to like stay in tune to know what the fuck's going on. But um, uh, this week I got to choose the album. Yes, you did. And I chose uh, Onyx Shut Him Down. Oh, shit. Now, um, the reason I chose this album is... Yeah, why did you choose that album of all albums? Yeah, and uh, what, Of all, like, albums or Onyx albums? Just, well, that too, but all albums and that particular Onyx album. So, like, just being truthful, like, I've heard Back the Fuck Up, and First I've heard time. Back the Fuck Up too, and um, there is a two. But there was a second album. This is the point I'm trying to trying to make okay I've, i haven't heard every onyx album you haven't heard the second album all we got is all we us? got is i haven't heard it my god but okay. what i'm but what i'm saying is to me th so there's that why to answer your question about why i chose this album amongst the honest the onyx albums that are out there oh, okay this is just the, the one i heard now why i chose this album amongst all the other albums the reason why it's a classic to me it was just the, the this was the first onyx album i actually um uh, i actually ever heard so I listened to this, wow. I listened to this one, and then I went back, wow. and I heard the first one. Yeah, so when I heard this shit, this shit blew my fucking mind. Okay. Okay, so not okay. only to me was it just something totally different, mm -hmm. three ball-headed niggas rapping their ass off, yelling and screaming and shit like that. <laughs> yeah. I got introduced to Sticky Fingers for the first time. Okay. So listening to all these songs, I'm waiting for the Sticky Fingers verse. Yeah. As far as the album goes, like the album's filled with stories. Okay, um, for instance, Robin Vick. Robin Vick is which is one of the illest fucking rap stories. Um uh Veronica, mm -hmm. dope fucking story. Mm -hmm. 50 Cent was on the album. 50 Cent and DMX. And DMX, but DMX, but this is the thing. 
DMX is like visually credited. Like when you when when the, when uh, the Shut 'Em Down video came out, you mm -hmm. seen Onyx featuring DMX. Mm -hmm. When uh, React, which is the song Fifty Cent on, when that came out. You didn't see a 50 cent credit. No. To be honest with you, the first time I heard the song, I'm like, who is this guy? Yeah, I, I didn't yeah, know who 50 yeah, was at that yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, you know, 50 came out and I completely forgot about it. And then I go back and I'm like, that's 50 cent. Yeah. Yeah. He's, in my opinion, he sucks on the song. I, so you're calling this album a classic. I think this album's flawless. It has one of my favorite songs. Did you really just say it's flawless? Yeah, I think okay, it's flawless. Go ahead. Man. It has go one of my ahead. favorite songs of all time on the album. What is that? Um, uh, Black Dust. I That's like you want to know what's really funny? Yeah, and I'll show you right now. This is no word of a lie. Yeah, Black Dust is my favorite song off of that whole. Yeah, the song's album. incredible, man. Black but what? Dust, okay, but what yeah. about what about the worst? Onyx Wu Tang. The worst, and the the, the last one. Yeah, uh, which was Face Down on the pavement. pavement. Yes, but I gotta tell you, that album was not as good. Is all we got is us. I mean, my I haven't heard it. I haven't you heard haven't it. heard it. So what? What is it about the album? This album that There's doesn't just a, hold up. A to few you. bubbly commercial shit. That, like which song? That fucking React song is horrible. You think so? I like that song. I don't like it at all. I don't think that that album was make well it reach, put. Reach, make it reach, I make you reach the man upstairs where Sticky's like sliding on the ice. That video where they're on, they're playing oh, hockey little, and shit. Little X directed that shit. Yeah, I thought that was dumb, um, man. It's it's funny because this album, I remember when I first got the album because Back the Fuck Up, All We Got Is Us. Um, that was like when Shifty was out. Oh, that shit. Mm -hmm. And then this album on uh, All Music, they only gave it a 5 out of 10. Ooh. All music gave it a five out of ten. Yeah, they talked about the album, saying that it's the official follow up to All We Got Is Us, but this album didn't have that same that same sound from Onyx that they were looking what, like for. What like and shit? Well, yeah, and it it doesn't it didn't go back to their slam. Like it, it, there was nothing on the album. That could hold a candle to the slam song that their first the single point, was. The point. Slam. Yeah, yeah. Um, it also talked about that there's nothing on Shut 'Em Down that's nearly as good as Slam, and there's nothing that's flat out bad either. But this particular album just took them in a completely different direction. So the album that there's the, the album that they're talking about, Shut 'Em Down, yeah, wasn't as good as all they all we got is us, and was not as good as their first album, Back the Fuck Up. That this, this album is what kinda, the oh. production kind of went off. User ratings actually gave it four stars out of five, yeah. and all music rating gave it two and a half stars. Two and so a half out of five. Which is pretty bad. But on a side note for that, on a positive, yeah. it peaked up to number 10 on the Billboard 200 charts. So they sold records. They sold records. And I think the reason why, first of all, they're on Def Jam. Second yep. of all, they had good, strong features on the album, which they Big don't Pun, use. Big Pun, Noriega, Wu-Tang. Wu -Tang. They had fucking DMX, DMX on who there. was incredible at that time. So you got to understand. Selling four million albums out the game go. and shit like that. So you, uh, before that, they didn't focus on features. Those mm. first two albums didn't have features. And then this third album, all of a sudden, they're like, oh, let's get some features, features on yeah. And that might have helped cushion it a little bit. Yeah. And bring in that 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 notoriety and bring people through like, ah, shit, DMX is on this, Rough mm -hmm. Riders, you know? Yeah. I'm not saying that's the reason why it went to number 10, but when you have recognizable names, especially Wu-Tang, because Wu-Tang was already popping. They were huge. Of course. So if you were this Wu, is ninety. This is 98. This is this like- This came out in 98, man. And, and this is just jumping off of like Wu-Tang Forever. Wu-Tang Forever was what, 97? Yeah. Like sometime in 97. Around that I, time, yeah. So, yeah, and yeah. this is Wu-Tang Forever. This is where they're like multi-platinum. Mm -hmm. Wu-Tang is like the shit- yeah. At the time. Yeah. And you got the worst. Did you remember that video? Sticky fingers rhyming on the car and shit like that. that Method video. Man and missing a fucking hand. And Why is this a classic album? In your opinion. To me, it's a classic album. Um, for just, you, because this is your pick. So Yeah, for me, it's a classic. I don't have to agree. For me, it's a classic album just because it has variety. Again, for me, it's something new. Okay? Like mm -hmm. the type of shit that I was listening to back then. Yeah. It, nothing sounded like it. Yeah. You understand what I'm true. saying? There was storytelling on there. Mm -hmm. I liked the production. I liked some of the, the I, yeah, I liked the I liked the I liked the uh the, the, the collaborations that they did. Big I pun. didn't like I didn't like the DMX song. I didn't like the Shut Them Down song mm -hmm. and I did not like the remix either. I love the fucking remix. Like I tried listening to it even again today, and I was like, this is the reason why I did not pay attention to this album. 
as no, much as I should have. To me, like to me, and like I said, like it was almost kind of like my first real introduction to Sticky Fingers. Mm -hmm. So just imagine watching your favorite show. And you know at the end, like you ever fuck with Power Rangers and shit? Yeah, yeah. You know yep. at the end when they do the battle with the big nigga, they they grab the fucking the the big robots and shit. Yeah, yeah, Happens yeah, at the yeah. end of every episode. Mm -hmm. And that was like the illest part in the episode. Yeah. You couldn't you, yeah, you couldn't wait. So to me, first, that was my first real introduction to Onyx. So and this though, so, again, my first real introduction is Sticky, who I'm a huge fan of. So Sticky comes last on like every single fucking song. <laughs> it's like you just gotta wait. So I'm just like, I'm like, I can't wait to hear what this nigga says next. So to me, it was brand new. Like I said, I love the production and mm -hmm. I love the variety of the music. And it was just fucking hard. Like I never heard anything like it. And it, it, to me, can, it was to me, that. it was po that. it was polarizing. Mm -hmm. It was polarizing. Now, with that being said, I do think it's better than uh, their first album, Back the Fuck Up. I do yeah, think I would it's, say I, so. I, 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 I do, would say, I, I, do, say I do think it's better than Back the Fuck Up 2. But too. the production was different, though. Yeah, that's fine. I'm Completely just, you know, different. Of course. I'm just telling yeah. you what I think. Yeah. Now, and outside, I just, outside of that, I, I never heard the All We Got Is Us album. I'm going to listen to that and get back to you on that. But to wrap up off the classic, like, again, I told you why I think it's a classic. What are your thoughts on it? I don't think it's a classic. Mm -hmm. I would say Back the Fuck Up is a classic. Because that was their introduction, mm -hmm. and that album is still working for them. Yeah. Because people, when they hear Slam, and they hear those shifty, mm -hmm. those mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, those songs still stick. Like when I want to listen to a, a, a Onyx song, yeah, Shifty is my go-to. That's shit. where you go. You don't go to nothing off of uh, Shut Them Down. No. The first song Fuck, I usually that's where I go. It's man. funny. The first song I usually think of when I think of Onyx yeah. is Shifty. Yeah. There's, the video is grimy, and Sticky Fingers verse is fucking. Un oh, actually, all three of them, man. Yeah, they just go in, and the video. I don't know if you ever seen the video to that, nah. but the video is creepy. It's weird. Yeah. They're wearing oversized army gear, and they're just you know bowing down like shifty, low down, dirty and grimy. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. My yeah, mom yeah. dropped me on my head when I was a kid. <laughs> you know, like that. When like there was so much energy in that shit. So whenever I want to tune in to Onyx, that's the first fucking song. Because I wanted to be like those guys. Everyone did. You know what I mean? Like At the time, Onyx yeah. was the, f and they still, like, well, not now. No. Nah. But Onyx, to me, they opened up a floodgate of a new sound. That's, that's what I'm you saying. You know what I mean? But that's why, again, keep in mind, right? So the first time you were introduced to Onyx was back the fuck back up. Back the fuck up. The first time I was introduced to Onyx was Shut Em Down. Right. But you know what? Shut Em Down, if you, okay. Listen to all their albums, yeah, and then revisit that idea. Oh, absolutely! Because I will. "Back to Fuck Up" to me is a classic. Uh, Shut them down. I probably give it a six out of ten. Six out of ten. That's just over fifty. That's sixty percent. It's not so bad. It's because I wasn't a fan of a lot of the production on the album. Yeah, but there are some songs on there that really turn my head. But if "Shut Them Down" is your title track, yeah, and the remix is not my favorite either, that already dropped points. Because I don't like the title Nori track. Noriega and Big Pun, man. Get out of here, man. Noriega and Big Pun. I'm not, I'm not a big, big fan pun. of Noriega by himself anyways. And I wasn't the biggest Big Pun fan either. Oh. Big Pun to me was overrated. Oh. But I'm not even going to get into that no. conversation. Yo, his Twitter is at by the music. I'm not I like look, the look, vibe music with a K. If people in this world aren't <laughs> honest about how they feel... That's a fact. Don't say you're taking a shit when you're really having diarrhea. That's a fact. That's and I'm going to keep it real for y'all. He's allowed to give his opinion. Big pun was cool, but I didn't really fuck okay, with Okay, nope, nope, nope. So okay, we're going to end the show here. We, we, we're going we're gonna to pick up off that. But, um, uh, fiddle, fiddle, no, fiddle, fiddle, no, fiddle. no don't do it. <laughs> don't do it. So, yo, you guys, uh, man, this has been, uh, like always, man, a pleasure. In Italy, fiddle. <laughs> 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 Yo, shout out to Mike Boogie at Maximum yes, FM. Mike Boogie, man. Maximum FM, man. And uh, but again, you guys know. <laughs> <laughs> you guys know you could catch us every Saturday from 9 to 10. Yeah, We're going to talk that hip hop, man. Continue selling your virginity online. Fiddly, fiddly, <laughs>
literally. <laughs> <laughs> I put my foot in the kitchen. Whatever no, the fuck. No, he no, says. no. <laughs> Yo, you guys, you guys know you can follow Mike Divine on Twitter at Mike Divine Music with a K. With a K. You can follow me on Twitter at I'm Chris Green, all one word. I I, li- <laughs> also on Instagram. No disrespect. Rest in peace to Big Absolutely, Pun. man. I but, li- <laughs> <laughs> also on Instagram, the ignorance is free with a Z. With a Z. Don't forget to uh, like and subscribe to the YouTube channel. The ignorance is free with the Z. Now, listen, as always, if you just missed the show, it's, it's going to be airing right at 10 o'clock. So you can catch the show in its entirety. And, you know, look, if you have any comments, leave it in the fucking comments, man. We're going to give you guys a shout out on the show. Absolutely. You can say whatever the fuck you want. Anything gonna, at all. We're still going to mention your comment on the show. You could do it on Twitter. You can add us on Twitter with your comment, whatever you want to do. Just don't forget to use the hashtag, uh, hashtag uh, the chop up. All right. The chop so, up, baby. Um, yeah, man, make sure you guys stay tuned in. And like always, I'm a man of my fucking word. Shaw Prince, coming for you, nigga. Yeah, I talked to him. Coming for he you, He knows. Nigga. Oh, happy birthday to Shaw Prince. Yes, of course. It's his birthday happy birthday today. Well, I, 25 by time, again. By the time this airs, um, uh, it's going to be belated. But mm-hmm. uh, He's listened to all the episodes already. I'm just trying to get this guy down here. Yeah, man, he's going to be down here at least for one episode. I feel like- <laughs> <laughs> That'll turn into a thousand. But like always, Super Nigga Black Powers activate. Yeah. The Chop Up Episode the Chop 5. Chop Up Episode 5, motherfuckers. We out. Peace. Peace. I feel like- <laughs>